Hi, my name is David Warner Matheson, and today is the 10th of April, 2022. And recently there have been internet rumors that a United States active duty general, Lieutenant General Roger Cloutier, has been captured by the Russians in the city of Mariupol, helping the Azov Battalion, and a stronghold of the Azov Battalion and among the Azov Battalion. And we do know that there were three attempted helicopter rescue missions that went into Mariupol and all three were unsuccessful. Like they were trying to withdraw a very sensitive person or sensitive persons from the heart of the city and all three of those rescue attempts were unsuccessful. So it is possible that those rescue attempts were for somebody who's, if their location got out, it would be very embarrassing for the United States to have a U.S. Army active duty general in Mariupol with the Azov Battalion, okay? Because that is collaborating with the Azov Battalion. That is a Nazi, openly pro-Nazi. They fly Nazi flags. They wear the Wolf's Angel uh, emblem, the SS Wolf's Angel emblem from World War II that the SS Nazi Wolf's Angel units wore. They, they wear that on their shirts. They put that on their youth camp t-shirts that they have little kids in the Ukraine wearing as they march around with guns and get trained by the Azov Battalion. They are not a neo-Nazi unit, they are a Nazi unit. And the Ukraine has a history of Nazi collaborators in the Ukraine going all the way back to World War II and continuing to glorify some of that history, in particular Stepan Bandera, who is a collaborator with the SS in World War II. There are statues of Bandera in the Ukraine to this day, and he was actually declared a hero of the Ukraine by the government of the Ukraine in the 2000s. Okay, so if there's a U.S. Army general who is secretly coordinating with and collaborating with the Azov Battalion in the Ukraine, that in and of itself is repulsive. And even worse, it also gives credence to the possibility that the U.S. Army was actually training and planning an offensive on the Donbass region, the Donetsk and Luhansk regions, which is primarily of Russian-speaking people in Ukraine that have been massacred since the 2014 Maidan coup. Over 10,000, in fact, around 14,000 or more men and women in the Donbass have been killed by indiscriminate shelling and attacks by Ukrainian regular and irregular units, militias, including the Azov Battalion, who are virulently anti-Russian. And they banned the speaking of Russian and they've killed many people in the Donbass region. And it's possible because all the Ukrainian military units were gathering on the borders of the Donbass, Donetsk and Luhansk, prior to the Russian special operation, the Russian invasion, that there was a attack being planned on the Donbass, a secret attack that was being planned, and the Russians found out about it. And that's why they launched their special operation when they did. If that's the case, that would be very embarrassing to the narrative that's being pushed so aggressively right now. And it would be extremely embarrassing if there was a U.S. Lieutenant General there helping to coordinate and to plan that. And it would be very hard to deny that if a Lieutenant General was actually captured in Mariupol with the Azov Battalion. And maybe that's why there were these desperate helicopter rescue missions that were unsuccessful. I don't know. But if that's the case, then what is the United States Army doing helping Nazis? What is the United States Army doing helping to plan an attack on the Donbass, if that's true? And what is the United States Army doing? And what is the Congress doing? And what is the President doing authorizing a United States Army General to be collaborating with the Azov Battalion? That's what citizens of the United States, men and women, and in fact, men and women everywhere in the world should be asking.
it is extremely objectionable, extremely disgusting, and it demands a question if that was actually the case. Now, if, if that was the case, it's being denied right now, and there are all kinds of fact checker videos that are saying, oh no, there was no general, there was no US Army general that was captured by the Russians in Mariupol. Like here's one uh, from Check Verify that I found, but you can find many others that are saying, well, look at these pictures of uh, General Cloutier. I have no idea when those pictures were taken. Or look, General Cloutier's LinkedIn says, I was not captured by the Russians, or, or that's ridiculous. Still, that didn't stop an internet rumor claiming U.S. Army Lieutenant General and NATO officer Roger Cloutier had been captured by Russian forces in Ukraine. So, let's verify. Was U.S. Army Lieutenant General Roger Cloutier captured in Ukraine by the Russian Army? Our sources are NATO and Cloutier's LinkedIn profile. Cloutier leads NATO's Allied Land Command based in Turkey. The rumors of his supposed capture began circulating on April 3rd. But NATO says he hasn't been in Ukraine since last summer. Cloutier took to his LinkedIn to refute the claim, saying, quote, These rumors are completely false. On April 5th, Cloutier hosted a NATO meeting in Turkey and was seen in pictures posted to NATO Allied Land Command's official Facebook and Twitter accounts. A NATO spokesperson told Verify claims of Cloutier's capture are, quote, fake news. So it's false that Lieutenant General Roger Cloutier was captured in Ukraine by the Russian army. NATO troops are not directly involved in the combat, and Cloutier was hundreds of miles away in Turkey. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. That's not very strong confirmation that he was not captured. What you need is a video of General Cloutier saying, uh, no, this is ridiculous. Look, I'll give you some clear evidence that this video was made after I was supposedly captured. Uh, let me tell you the price that Apple and Google closed today on the New York Stock Exchange. Or let me tell you the score of the latest Lakers game from Friday night or from Saturday or something like that. Let me tell you the opening uh, score of such and such baseball team. And, and you see General Cloutier saying that, then, then you know, okay, well, he's safe and sound. Look, he's in such and such uh, safe location. And he's talking about the stock market that closed on Friday or the baseball game that happened on Saturday. Now you can still fake those things. Now we've seen deep fake technology, but that would go a lot longer way towards proving that no, the United States did not have a general in Mariupol who was captured by the Russians then. Some, uh, oh look, his LinkedIn has said that he uh, is okay, or here's a picture of him with a bunch of other people. There's no way of knowing when that picture was taken, but let me tell you, it doesn't matter. No, strike that, it does matter. But here's something that cannot be denied, something that is equally disturbing and objectionable and should have men and women throughout the United States and in fact throughout the world saying, what is going on? If you go to Roger Cloutier's LinkedIn page, he has posts on LinkedIn where he is using the phrase, glory to Ukraine, Glory to the heroes. He writes it in English. Sometimes he writes it in Cyrillic, in Ukrainian. That phrase is the phrase that was used by the nationalist Ukrainian forces under Bandera and other Nazi collaborator leaders who collaborated with the SS in World War II. The phrase, glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes, is a phrase that dates back to World War II, to units that committed atrocities, that committed massacres, and they use that phrase, glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. In fact, there was a massacre at Janowa, I may not be pronouncing it exactly right, Yanova, in 1943, on Good Friday. We're actually coming up to Good Friday right now in 2022. The Janova massacre, was committed by this nationalist, these nationalist, banderist, Nazi collaborator forces where they hacked people to pieces with axes, killed over 600 men, 
women and children in the town of Yanova Dolina or Yanova Dolina. And these were the nationalist forces who used that phrase, glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. That is a militaristic phrase, heroes. It's not just an innocent patriotic phrase. That is a phrase that has history going back to these nationalist, banderist, Nazi collaborator forces. And here's a United States general openly using that phrase on his LinkedIn profile, not once, but multiple times, sometimes spelling it in Ukrainian. That's akin to using phrases like blood and honor or blut und eret. You can't use that phrase legally. You can't even use that phrase in Germany because that was the motto of the Hitler youth. They had that on their belt buckles. They received pocket knives with blood and honor written on it in those, those uh, black letter font letters, blood and honor, blut und eret. You can't use that because using that phrase is directly hearkening back to the Hitler youth and using the phrase Sig Heil. You wouldn't expect a United States general to use the phrase Sig Heil. We all know what that means. It's not like an innocent phrase or the swastika. You can't say, well, swastikas, they're an ancient symbol. They've been used for thousands of years. They've been used in India. They've been used in China. That's all true. Swastikas are an ancient symbol, but the swastika has been ruined as an ancient symbol because it is completely associated with the Third Reich in Nazi Germany. So you cannot innocently use a swastika and say, well, it's just an innocent symbol. It could mean something else. You can't do that, especially if you're a, a three-star general. You cannot do that. You cannot do that. And so you cannot use the phrase glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes, and claim that that's just an innocent phrase. That is a phrase that was used by Banderas Nazi collaborators in World War II that committed atrocities and they continued after World War II and Bandera continues to be seen as a hero by some in the Ukraine to this day. And there are strong currents of third generation Nazi supporters in Ukraine. And so the question is, what is a U.S. Army general doing using that phrase on his LinkedIn page? There's another question. Was he in Mariupol helping the Azov Battalion? Was he planning some kind of... That's, that's a huge question. That's a huge uh, revealing fact if it's true. But setting that aside, what the hell is he doing with glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes, on his LinkedIn page prominently with exclamation points. Like the, I was literally shocked when I went to his LinkedIn page and saw that. I, I literally exclaimed something out loud when I saw that. I was so shocked to see that on the LinkedIn page of this general, this three-star general. How is that? That needs to be retracted. That needs to be apologized for. That needs to be explained. What is going on? Unless we really are supporting Nazis. That's very revealing. Is the United States supporting openly Nazi units in the Ukraine? That's something that men and women around the world should be paying attention to and should be outraged by. And it's very revealing. What else are we not being told? What is really going on?